I'm a rave with dabbling in the dirt. Bunk soul, see how the stuff tears in my shirt? Ooh, and by the math, here I gash a shameful hobby shred. And one tear further, a man may thrust in his head. God's teeth is not yet two days fully in it since my day girt these bridges amended. <laughs> Some felon's fear must haunt our house indeed. For foolish to venture, where I have no need. Who was the mad boy fast to be at this day? Charred and flamed and beaten all hours of the day. What? Lamed and hung the star, pricked up all in jags. No cash to hide my back save for a few rags. What? what a I say, Tim, if thou be Tim as a Sure thou be? What make a two devils this between our dame and thee? Gog spread hearts thy fortune thou wouldst gone all this while. It had been better for some of us to have been hence a mile. My gamma is so out of course and frantic all along. She is undone, she saith. Her joy in life is gone. By our lady, I'm not very glad to see her in this dump. Perchance her still up on it, she hath broke her up. Nay, and that were the worst, we would not greatly care. For breasting of her huckleberry, a breaking of her chair, for greater, greater is her grief, odd as we all shall feel. My gamma has gone and lost her treasured kneel. Uh, her kneel? Her kneel, by him that made me our tell the truth. God sacrament, I wish she had lost the heart out of her belly. The devil shame upon her as you claim. How came this chance, Saint Tim, unto our day? My gamma sat down on the couch and bade me reach thy riches. By and by, the chance to spy as she did take two stitches. Twas caught the cat, who leapt like that and landed on the table, then smooth as silk, fell in the milk as quick as he was able. Oh, beast out these, my gamma cried and swept the riches down. Upward his staff and outward cock and doors into the town. Since that time was, never on it set again our eyes. She's gone and lost her needle, she says. I've lost my precious cross. Uh. <laughs> alas, alas, I grew this day. I may well curse and ban. Since cock our cat hath overturned the milk within the pan. For this new luck I then up sprang, as knowest did my maid. And in the mess my needle fell and robbed me of my trade. My fair, long, straight, dear needle gone that was mine only treasure. The first day of my sorrow is at last end of my pleasure. Am I to kept it when you had it, but fools will be fools still. Lose what once fast in your hand, you need not, but ye will. Oh, go hide thee, Tim, and run that way to the end, here of the town. Did scary dust out in thy lap, seek where thou pourst it down. With hair, rake o'er the ashes, as I know that thou hast learned. So see, in all this heap of dust, thou leave no straw unturned. That will I, Gamma, swift and tight, and soon be here again. Tim, stoop and look down to the ground, and see thou take some pains. Dear Gamma Gert, you've become as forgetful as a goose. By God's soul, I think you'd lose your arse if it were loose. Your needle lost, to pity you should lack care and endless sorrow. <gasps> oh, Goxton, how shall my bridges be so? Shall I go thus tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> But 
you to this sadness. I fear me by thy conscience you will sure fall to madness. My goodly sewing needles disappeared. It's lost and gone. It cannot be discovered, though we search from dusk to dawn. Know you any tidings of which way my needles gone? Aye, that I do. Doubtless as you shall hear anon. I saw a thing this matter toucheth when I was a labor. Twas at this gate, before my face, I saw your very neighbor. She, she stooped her down and up, she took up a needle or a pin. I durst be sworn to even yours by all my mother's kin. Well, who was it? Dick and speak, I pray thee, quickly tell me that. A subtle board as any in this town. Your neighbor here, Dame Chat. Dame Chat! Dickon, let me be gone, chill thither in your face. Well, take my counsel ere ye go forth, ere ye walk in waste, for when she took it up, even here before your door, what soft dame chat, quoth I, that same is none of yours. Avaunt, quoth she, sir knave, what knowest thou of that I find? I would thou kissed me I know where. Where? <laughs> she meant her fat behind. <gasps> oh, by the mass, I'll rather spend the coat that's on my back Thinks that full start by such a slight that all my needle lack. Slip not your gear, I counsel you, but of this take good heed. Let not be known I told you of it, how well so e'er ye speed. I will, dear Dickie, never talk of what you set before me, but once I may my needle see, I'll sure recall thy story.
spider's crap. Oh, oh hot. My heart, where was thy help when the vixen had me down? What? 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 What shall we lose our Neo thus? No, I were loath to do so. Think so? I'll take that at her hand. No, Hodge, I tell thee no. We have a parson, Hodge, thou knows, a man esteemed wise. Good Dr. Rat, I'll for him send, and here is his advice. He will her shrive for all this gear, and give her penance straight. We'll have our needle, I'll stand Jack comes there within heaven gate. Go seek him at our filter shop, for as I've heard reported, they have the finest ale in town, and now is most resorted. Ooh. Ooh. Though she were stronger at the first, as I think I did find her. Yet there, I dressed the drunken sow what time I came behind her. Nay, nay, I'm sure she lost not all of but set them to beginning, and I doubt not, but Dr. Rath will boast not of her winning. A man from better twenty times be a man dog in mark than here among such a sword, the Paris priest of Mark, where he shall never be at rest. One pissing all a day, but you must trudge up and down the town, going this way and that way, he here to a drab, there to a thief, his shoes to tear and rent, and that which is worst of all, at every knave's commandment. I had not fit the space to sip two pots of ale, when Gamagut and Simple Man were straightway at my sale. But she was sick, and I must come to do I know not what. If once her fingers end but ache, trudge, call for Dr. Rat. Yet must I talk so sage and smooth as if I were a chooser. But ere the year be at an end, I shall be sure the loser. What work ye, Gamagut? No, here's your friend, Dr. Rat. Oh, good master, Dr. Rat, but troubled you, I want well that. How do ye, woman, be ye lusty, or be ye not well at ease? Why, Dr. Master, I'm not sick, and yet, ooh, I have disease. What's the matter that you call me for my drink and meal? Alas, alas, I have a lost my good and precious needle. Ah. My needle, I say, and what he want? A drab came by and spied it, and when I asked her for the same, the film flatly denied it. What would ye have me do? Tell me if you please, I will do the best I can to set you both at ease. But be ye sure that this dame chap hath this your kneel found. Well, here comes the man that saw her take it up off of the ground. Ask him yourself, good Master Rat, if ye believe not me. And help me to my needle for God's sake and charity. Come near, Dickon. Let us hear what thou hast spoken. Will thou be sworn thou seest Dame Chat this woman's kneel taken? Will you say a thing and not stick to it to try it? Stick to it, quote you, Master Rat. Mary, sir, I deny it. Nay, there be many an honest man when he such blast has blown. And to his friend's ear he would be loathed the same by him were known. Then we shall never be the nearer for all that you can tell. Yea, Mary, sir, if ye will heed by mine advice and counsel. If Mother Chat see all us here, she'll know how the matter goeth. Therefore I read you thee go hence, and therein keep close, and I will e'en to Dame Chat's house go, and so the matter use, that ere ye could go twice to church, I warrant you hear news. Good Dickie, you will find she has my needle, this I think. And while we wait, let in we go and have ourselves a drink, oh. yes. <laughs> Now, Mother Chat, my gossip talk first with all I must, for she must be chief captain to lay the rat in the dust. Good evening, Dame Chat, and faith, and well met in this place. Good evening, good friend Dickon, whither walk ye this day? Well, even to you, to see how the world goeth. Uh, heard ye no more of the other matter? Say me now by your trunk. Oh, Dickon, hear the old crone and a heart that great name. Oh, I would in sooth that thou hast seen. Oh, Lord, I trust them brave. Oh, Lord. Uh, that is the thing, that Hodge is so offended. He swears by heaven and hell he will see you upended and leave you not a head alive by eight o'clock tomorrow. Your hens and cocks be as good as dead and you with but much sorrow. Oh, that knave dare as well go hang himself as go upon my ground. Well, if ye will hear my story, I will tell you my tale round. Uh, have you not about your house, behind your furnace or lead, 
A hole where a crafty knave may creep in for me. Oh, by the mass, a hole did open up even within these two days. Ah, Hodge intends to this same night slip in their ways. God's beard, then, when he does come, no I what he has said. I will meet him at the other end and beat about his head! <laughs> now like I but my doctor to play his part. And lo, where he cometh towards, for adventure to his pain. What news, Dickon? Did speak with Mother Chat? Indeed, sir, I did, sir. As I planned, I did just that. Hast thou spied the Neil Bray? Did your plan go well? I have spied in face, sir. Thus more can I tell. For there she sat, a sewing, a halter, or a band, with no other thing but Gemma's needle in her hand. Oh, Dickon, were I not there then in thy state? Well, if ye will be ordered and by me thus be led, I will take you to a place as the house stands where ye shall take the drab with the needle in her hand. See not what is here, a hole wherein you may creep into the house, ah. and suddenly, unawares, among them leap. There will ye find the bitch fox and the needle together. Do as I bid you, man, come on your way hither. Art thou sure the swill term lies not hereabout? I was within myself, man, even now, there is no doubt. Go softly now, make no noise. Put out your foot, Sir John. Here will I wait upon you till you come out and on. Oh, <laughs> God's Collian! <laughs> oh, his other Collian! Oh, 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 help, Dickon! Now, oh, alas, I shall be slain among them! If they give you not the needle, tell them you shall hang them! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, worth the hour that I came here! And woe worth he who wrought this gear! Master Bailey, the bailiff, he be worth his ears! Will. Staff all the murderers in all that they bears! I will surely neither buy nor sup till I fetch him hither this matter to take up! I've heard from all and I'll speak from my heart, and find you all at fault in greatest part, but none in greater part than was the other, so judge you all the same would be my brother. If it be a fault, sir, beside his grief, when man is beaten when this took for thief, then I confess my fault therein this season, but I hope that you do not judge, hey toads, with reason. Yet by your tale and all you do name, if any played the thief, you were that same. The woman on your words to make probation did but withstand your forcible invasion. I am no thief, sir, but a learned clerk did not deserve my head broke in the dark. Dame Chat, Master Doctor claims you he to murder, and on his part again he saith further. He never you offended, not word nor intent. So to hear your answer thus, we have for you sent. Then I would have murdered him, nay! Fie on him, last note was some other thief tried to enter my house, and I, to save my goods, took great pains to watch, and as good fortune served me, took my fortune thus to catch now what strokes he bore away, or what other were his gains. I would not, but I was sure that he had something for his pain. Yet thou knowest not his name. I know it, but what then? It was that crafty Cullion Hot. My gaffers, ma'am. God bless you, Gamethus. God save you, master mine. Ask the knave within thy house, Hodge, a servant of thine. They tell me this busy knave is such a filching one that hen, pig, goose, or capon, thy neighbor can have none. Oh, this drab, she keeps away my good. The devil he might her snare. I pray you that I might now have a right action on her. But what would you charge her with all to see so ye do not wear? Mary, a vengeance on her heart, the slut had stolen my needle. Thy needle, old witch! No, in her arms thy salt enough, for thou didst say the other day that I had stolen thy cup and roasted it for my breakfast. Now this truth I can defend, for Tim, her maid, in sooth, told all of this to my friend. I never claimed you so a private cock. Uh, to hear me thus accused is quite a shock. The milk thief cat is quite alive, I'm certain, as that dame chat stole needle from Gamgurton. How knowest thou, Gamgurton, dame chat thy needle hath? To name you, sir, the party, I should not be very glad. Yea, but we must needs hear it, so therefore say it boldly. Such one as told the tale to me full soberly and coldly, so even he that then stood by would swear upon a book. What time this drunk 
can gossip of my fair long needle took. The bedlam, Dickon, spread the news. I am very sure you know him. A false name! By God's pity, ye will but a fool to trow him. No! The break come at hand, be like he was aware. Dickon, here be two or three thy company cannot spare. God bless you, and you may be blessed. So many all at once. I trust him not, tis another of his pranks be stunts. Thou mayst not play the knave and have this language too. If thou thy tongue bridle a while, the better thou mayst do. Confess the truth, as I shall ask, and cease a while to fable. For thy part, I promise thee, I am fair as I am able. I am sorry for nothing else, but I see not the sport. There was between them where they met, as they themselves report. Art thou content, Dickon, this shall on me depend? Go to, Master Bailey, say on your mind. I know ye are my friend. Then mark ye well, to recompense this thy former action, because thou hast offended all to make them satisfaction. Before their faces, here kneel down, and as I shall thee teach, for thou shalt take an oath upon young Hodges, holy breach. First, for Master Doctor, upon pain of his curse, where he will pay for all, thou never draw thy purse. And to good wife chat thou shalt be sworn, heed the sage advice, if she refuse thy money once, never to offer it twice. And for Gamma Girton's sake, again sworn thou shalt be, to help her to a needle again if it do lie in thee. And again be sworn by virtue of that, to be a good bearing to cock her great cat. And last of all to hard, the oath to scan, thou shalt never take him for fine gentleman. Well, hard gentleman, take good heed, do not you thee fail me. <laughs> oh, God, are you both, Bill? Dost thou impale me? Oh, what hard stuff he hurt thee ere ever he begin? He thrust me in the bug with a bargain or a pear. Oh, how 